This right here is the QNAP TS-464. This right here is the DS-923+. They are two almost identical NAS units from the outside, but they are so different in reality. And that begs a big question. Which of these should you choose? Because it's a much larger choice than which one has the specs you need and everything like that because they're two entirely separate ecosystems. QNAP versus Synology. If you were to poll my YouTube audience and said, what do you wish the hardware of the DS923 would have? I'm pretty sure the majority of them would have said essentially the hardware that is in this thing. This has a desktop Celeron Intel CPU with Intel QuickSync, basically an iGPU in there. It's got 2.5 gigabit networking on the back, two of them. It's got a half height PCIe expansion card in there and an HDMI output. You've got four bays up front for four hard drives, as well as two M.2 NVMe SSD slots that can be used for either an SSD cache or a volume. It is essentially the unit that a lot of my users describe as their ideal unit. But now the question is, should you buy it over the DS923 Plus? And that is the difficult question to answer. So the Synology DS923 Plus came out about a month ago and was very underwhelming to a portion of the audience, specifically because of the CPU in here, as well as a couple other reasons I'll get to in a minute here, and I agree with the other ones. So this right here has an AMD CPU in there. Its predecessor had an Intel iGPU in there, a Intel CPU with QuickSync, which means Plex users, this is the specific audience, are able to transcode 4K streams to 1080 streams and things like that using the GPU within the CPU rather than brute forcing it using the CPU. This means you're able to take a lackluster CPU for everything except Plex and make it incredibly powerful by ability to use the GPU in there, which is so much more efficient. You're able to do multiple 4K streams to 1080 when you can't even do a single one with a regular CPU generally. The other thing that was very disappointing was the fact that it came out with one gigabit ethernet ports on the back. These are two things that are probably the biggest sticking points that this NAS right here has. It has a desktop class Intel Cellular processor in there. It's got four cores and a iGPU, an Intel QuickSync GPU in there. So that means this is a perfect Plex box to pretty much anybody who really wants to be able to do hardware transcoding. It also came with two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports on the back, stock. They both also have the ability to add in a 10 gigabit card, though the QNAP version is a half height PCIe slot, which means it'll just work with whatever you throw in there, whereas the Synology one is a proprietary slot in card, which only they make. So with all that being said, should you buy the QNAP over the Synology? And the question really comes down to, can you live with the QNAP software over the Synology software? So I wanna start this by saying this is a somewhat uneven playing field. Both companies, QNAP and Synology, sent me these units for free, no strings attached to them, though I do work with Synology a lot more. I am much more familiar with Synology DSM than I am with QNAP's version. I know Synology a lot better and I definitely have a bias towards there. I'm working on doing better with QNAP and understanding them. It's just been hard to learn and relearn since I hit them like, oh, this is how Synology does it. It should be how QNAP does it. So I do definitely struggle with that. So I'm going to attempt to be unbiased, but just know there is an implicit bias there where I just know Synology better. So that being said, these units are incredibly similar. I'm just gonna list through some of the things. The Synology is $600. The QNAP is 550. They both come with four gigs of RAM, though the Synology can have up to 32 gigs, whereas the QNAP can only have up to 16 gigs. The QNAP CPU is significantly more powerful in multi-threaded workflows. It's about 50% more powerful when you're doing multi-core, but they both have the exact same single-threaded score within 10 points. So essentially, they have the same single-threaded score, but the QNAP has a much more powerful multi-core because it's actually got four cores with four threads instead of the Synology with two cores and four threads. The QNAP also has that Intel iGPU, which is huge for Plex transcoders specifically. 
networking, already talked about. This guy has two 2.5 gigabit networking ports on the back, whereas the Synology just has the one. And the QNAP has a much more versatile expansion card because you can put a any half height card in there that'll work with Linux, you can probably figure out how to get it working there. Whereas the Synology, you can't even slot in anything other than their single adding card now. They both come with slots for two M.2 NVMe SSDs, and both can be used for SSD caching or a volume. Though the Synology has a very large asterisk on there because you can only make an NVMe volume with Synology's proprietary NVMEs. So you can see there's a trend here. Synology, as it's gone on, has become more and more kind of locked down into their own specific ecosystem. You still can create the volume through terminal, but it's a little bit more risky. As for the fan noise, the Synology is dead silent, whereas the QNAP is quite audible. I will say, when you put large drives in here and they're reading writing, you're definitely going to be hearing the drives over the noise of the fan. But the QNAP I found to be significantly louder. It made a whirring noise the entire time. Whereas the Synology fans, I could not hear at all. So I had a time with just a SATA SSD in there and legitimately could not hear it at all. There are dead silent fans, whereas this is not that case. But remember, if you're putting large hard drives in there, it's probably not nearly as big of a deal. As it comes to looks, it's up to you. Do you really care that much? And finally, the QNAP has an HDMI port on the back that you can use for things like Plex and everything like that. So now with that out of the way, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Is QNAP's software good enough to replace Synology DSM? And I think it completely depends on what kind of user you are and how important some things are to you. So now I wanna split up potential users into three different categories. One are going to be home users, specifically those who are not using Plex transcoding. Two are gonna be business users and three are going to be Plex users. Those are the three distinct groups I wanna kind of do a comparison for. For home users who are not gonna be using it for Plex, the big deciding point between these two units is what you are going to be using it for and how much you're going to be tinkering. So QNAP, their software is not secure to set up on the internet. QNAP has had multiple vulnerabilities throughout the years. They have had an intern left a hard-coded password into the actual operating system, which meant every single QNAP had a hard-coded password and it was discovered. They do not have the same security measures as Synology does. Synology has not had ransomware on it based off of a vulnerability within Synology DSM. QNAP has had numerous ones where regular QNAP users who are following QNAP's best practices laid out by them and using their cloud features have had their entire NASes encrypted because the software had a vulnerability in it that was exploited. So if you are going to buy a QNAP, I would not recommend putting any QNAP software exposed to the internet other than maybe a, their VPN server. You're going to only want to have a VPN server hooked up to this and only do everything locally at least for the next time being. I'm really hoping in the future, QNAP kind of take a step back and say, hey, we've got to do a security overhaul on this because it's unacceptable. Because in my opinion, the level of security QNAP has for their public applications is unacceptable. It has had not just one or two, but multiple instances where a vulnerability is found in the software and they botch it. There have been numerous stories where a security company reaches out, tries to tell QNAP, that there's a massive bug in here that they found a vulnerability and QNAP doesn't even return their calls. It's because of those things that make it so that I cannot recommend anybody open up a QNAP to the internet unless it is just the VPN and Plex should be fine for that too. But the security is not there. Synology on the other hand has a very good program and their track record has shown very well. So the only instance where Synology has actually been attacked directly with ransomware, that's where the attack actually happens to the Synology, is when essentially users were opening up the NAS to the internet without changing the default username and password from admin admin. So this was mostly people who essentially just had an admin admin and set that up originally with like DSM-5 and then kept upgrading and then decided to expose it to the internet without changing the default login credentials. That's the only time that Synologies have ever been attacked. And it was not even necessarily that DSM was insecure. It was that users did not realize they had to change the password. And so that's why you'll notice if you have the username and password admin admin, or if you even have the user admin enabled, 
every single time it logs in, it's gonna say, hey, that's insecure, change it, because they don't want a repeat of that. Then the other ways that ransomware has occurred on a Synology has been when essentially one of your computers on the network gets a virus. The virus just starts finding every single drive it's got access to, like a mounted SMB share, and starts encrypting all the files on there. With BTRFS, which both these units are capable of and have, it is very easy, as long as you've got snapshots, to just do a one-click undo and boom, you're fine. But Synology has much better security and I can actually safely recommend people put it on the internet because of their track record. So because of that, for home users, you really have to ask yourself, are you comfortable setting up your own VPN server and running through everything like that? And what features do you want? I will say, there, once again, the bias I said earlier where I know Synology DSM better, Synology DSM has really powerful features that go beyond what QNAP is capable of. QNAP, I see it as essentially a very, very, very powerful hardware with some lackluster software, whereas Synology has lackluster hardware with very, very, very powerful software. That's kind of the difference in between these two. And so for home users, if you're really a tinker and you want everything that the QNAP has to offer and you know what you're doing and you know not to open things up and you don't really need any extra features like you don't wanna use PhotoStation or anything like that, then QNAP is a great option. You just need to know what you're getting yourself into and QNAP is a lot more difficult to kind of configure than Synology is. You'll click on something and it'll open another window and it'll lag and it, it's just not as clean and easy workflow as Synology DSM is. So for home users, you really have to decide how much do I want the more powerful hardware and how much do I want the more powerful software. For business users, I do think I would highly recommend setting up a Synology. You've already got the money and having a single source to see everything is not nearly as big of a deal. You'd much rather just make sure everything's secure and pay a little bit of extra money because you're probably not transcoding. Well, I don't know why business users would need that. And essentially it's your really good office file server. That's what Synology is great at. And it's got all these additional capabilities. So for business users, I would really recommend the Synology because it's just gonna be easier to set up your backups, your snapshots, and just the really basic things to keep your NAS secure. It's a lot easier to do that in Synology DSM. And it's got much more powerful features, even the ability to backup Windows PCs on the network and soon even Mac and Linux machines. All that through Active Backup for Business, there's a ton of great things that can just keep a business going that Synology has that QNAP does not. So now the final group are Plex transcoders. And the big question is how important is it to you? So if your NAS, you see your NAS as literally just a Plex target and that's all you use it for and maybe you wanna run a couple of Docker containers, I think the QNAP is totally fine. I think the QNAP has that CPU you're looking for with that hardware transcoding, and it's at a even cheaper price. It is a lot more flexible, and it's even got that HDMI port on the back. You can just hook it directly up to your TV. If you're that tinker who really just wants this thing for Plex, I think it's a great option. But you've just gotta realize the restrictions that are on you. The only thing you should be opening up to the internet through this is Plex, because Plex itself has its own security stuff built in, and so you don't need to worry about it. Because the way Linux works is when an application is exposed, it generally is only that application that can do anything, and so Plex is designed to run on the internet, and so you can open up Plex pretty safely without having to worry about any of the QNAP vulnerabilities that I mentioned earlier. It also has that built-in 2.5 gigabit that's really nice, so you can transfer those massive movie files from your computer to the box much quicker, and there's a lot of things like that but you just really have to say, hey, do I want any of the additional things on the internet that Synology has? Because I really am not going to recommend anybody open up any QNAP software to the internet itself, just because there have been so many cases where ransomware has occurred and people listening to best practices by QNAP have had their NASAs hacked because QNAP had massive vulnerabilities in their software that they did not patch. I hope this conversation in three years is different and I can say QNAP kind of hit rock bottom with their security stuff and realized that they need to do better and did an overhaul and since then there's been no issues. But until that time, I'm not gonna recommend anybody put a QNAP software exposed to the internet. 
All right, well, that's gonna be it for this kind of comparison. Thanks to QNAP and Synology for sending me these units. <laughs> QNAP, I apologize. They sent me this a while back. It was before my wedding and I'm just now getting to it, unfortunately. But overall, I'm really happy with the competition in this space because I think both these companies are going to force the other ones to do better and better rather than just being essentially a monopoly. Always good, and Azu Store is also working on moving in this space. I see them as the big three kind of home cloud units. Those, of those three, Synology is so far the only one who's not really been hacked. Hopefully, I'm not doing a retraction in like three months from now where Synology has a big vulnerability, but until that happens, great for opening up on the internet, more powerful hardware, and essentially you just kind of get to pick what you need. All right, have a good one. Bye.